Hey everyone, today is Sunday the 11th of August 2019. This is The Gap, episode 479. I'm Luke Laurie, Joe Gorey's here, and it's the weekend, baby. It's deep into the weekend. It's it We're is, on the uh, last half of that weekend. We're like last quarter of that weekend. I know, nearly missed a week. Nearly missed a week, but we got, we got there. there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's lucky that we got so much shit to talk about. How's your uh, your Sunday morning go? Afternoon. It's afternoon now. I went to bed at six o'clock this morning, mm. and it is one o'clock. Uh, it's one forty-eight now. <laughs> right. I uh, mm. I went to bed on Friday night mm. at about five o'clock in the morning. Yikers! Good effort. Strong effort. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's one of those weekends. What are we doing? I don't, I don't know. It's too old for this shit. I, I, I went out drinking on um, on Friday night and mm. then came back here mm. and I think we were playing video games. Yeah, you potatoed up some fucking otherwise sick runs. <clears throat> Play some fucking we, Battlefield 5 Firestorm. We, we played some Somehow, Battlefield. Somehow, <laughs> yeah. there were oceanic cues popping. So um, I, I got home and Nate was sitting in like discord by himself while other people were playing battlefield so i jumped in and he's like you want, want to try firestorm so I said, yeah we'll, we'll jump in we'll give it a crack a punt. and it popped like <laughs> within 10 seconds and i'm like oh okay this is how this is what's going on now so we jumped in um yeah got a got in a couple fights jumped into another game and then i think um we we you know there wasn't a lot of people in the server there was maybe 30 yeah 30 to 40 in both but at least it was you know it was still going um and they've managed to fix like uh um they've been having a lot of performance issues they put out a patch in like february or something where it really screwed with the the way that game runs um and uh it looks like they're actually getting back to fixing that because my game was running pretty decent yeah in um firestorm at least yeah mine too this room is good and so, and then uh, <clears throat> you jumped in. This is about eight o'clock, eight thirty. Yep. And we must have sat there for like ten minutes, and nothing fucking popped. <laughs> no, we had we had one game pop. We had an Asian sort of game pop, and yeah, it definitely seemed like I was some sort of fucking jinx. Like, no, it wasn't. It was. It must have been Europe or something, because it was yeah, two hundred and yeah, forty ping. Or... Huge ping. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it definitely seemed like I was some sort of jinx. And then, but like we still got into like after. A couple of recues later, um, mm. we got into a game. Got to play on an oceanic servers, low low ping, yeah. and uh, you got Nate killed by throwing a fucking flame grenade at a fucking tank for some reason. I still can't work it out. Oh no, it was an anti tank grenade. Sure, sure, sure it was. I'm sure it was. Like, yeah, I'm I sure had to, it was anti tank grenade model. Yep, yep. <laughs> you didn't need to throw shit at a tank that nobody else could fucking kill. But <laughs> I had. Uh... Panzers and there was and... there was a second tank like fucking 40, oh yeah around the corner yeah it, yeah <laughs> it was good but you did start yeah you started to fight with the tank anyway fucking yeah yeah oh, we we would have won if there wasn't a second tank <laughs> uh yeah Nate died pretty quickly from that mm. one. but uh it was cool yeah the game runs really fucking well like it feels honest to god runs better than PUBG I think uh, yeah. I- Absolutely. And, uh, unless you're playing on one of the optimized maps, the the latest. T- Erangel. Yeah. yeah Erangel, yeah. But uh, at the same time, no, Vikendi is definitely not optimized. It's probably where I get my worst frame drops. But uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy because Battlefield, like Firestorm, obviously looks a billion times better. But yeah, it runs way better as well. Like, yeah, it's running heaps better now compared to, I think two or three months back when yeah. I was playing it it got to a point where it was really bad like the last six months that game has tanked so so hard in performance yeah yeah they're definitely on the upswing with that shit which is cool it's rad yeah like uh, it's I mean the fact that we were getting that um, 250 millisecond game was popping like even that server was empty yeah uh, it wasn't full yeah um yeah, they need to uh, make a change with... They just got to get people in. I would love to just allocate some time to get 
a bunch of people to just start fucking queuing for for Firestorm again. I think you would have to organize it though, you know, like you'd have to actively organize to get people to play uh, Firestorm because randomly queuing on Friday night worked out like fine enough, but... But yeah, we, we queued for ages. Yeah, and it was a surprise that it worked you know mm. it's it's awesome that other people were also randomly queuing on a friday night yeah yeah they just need to fix the matchmaking again same same as what's going on with PUBG, right is that yeah. they need to really tee down that matchmaking issue. no but like it, it goes beyond that though they have to like market it they have to get the word out there that firestorm is you know good working well and that kind of stuff they have to get people back into that game because mm-hmm. they or they pissed they they like indie I, i've seen indie games that haven't shit the bed with their relaunch that hard like good lord no man's sky had a better fucking relaunch than battlefield 5 did in january mm. like with firestorm and shit yeah yeah uh speaking of which um there was uh it was we can talk about now rather than in the news section because i don't have it in there but uh apparently there's a story going around that call of duty modern warfare will be uh, have a battle royale mode and it'll be free to play yeah launching um early next uh, year early next year yeah independent of modern warfare um yeah that's the, i've seen that story going around it i think you said it uh anyone gets credit for it you do uh <laughs> literally literally accosted them in a fucking interview it's telling them they had to fucking make it go uh it's free to play free to play otherwise it was just gonna die so yeah uh no i'm sure i'm sure it was inevitably their plan uh but nobody else told the devs to their fucking faces they had to do it so <laughs> yeah so i'm taking that one so yeah credit to luke on that one yeah, uh, they were gonna release it you have to pay for that game until i came along yeah exactly yeah you, you're gonna have to, it was gonna be fucking 60 bucks baby um no it's exactly what they need to do i mean i've spoken to countless people who've who've like just sort of spitballed how a follow-up to blackout would work or be better and it was it is literally it has to be independent of the call of duty release cycle uh, it has to be free to play and yeah like mm. it has to be based on a better engine than whatever they're they're currently working on though than whatever blackout was on which was on the you know the, the old engine reanimated corpse of quake 2 <laughs> Quake three, actually. Quake three, Quake three, yeah, 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 like oh, fuck Quake it. three sort of legs and like a like some sort of weird arm, yeah, that they've modified, yeah, yeah, and like this torso from like fucking <laughs> this year, but like the fucking the other arm is from fucking nineteen ninety nine or some shit, and you're like, mm. the fuck is this shit still working? Um, yeah, yeah, but, but this that, new engine looks, that's what Modern um, Warfare is. Actually, while I was speaking about Modern Warfare, I did want to last week I a hit uh, on Kill Streak pretty hard, but I was re listening to our um, to our interviews and like just going through the rest of it. I used obviously I generally when I transcribe and put up a story, I will uh, just sort of listen to the relevant bits. I'll just skip yeah, through. I'm yeah. like, oh yeah, I remember they said this. I'll just get to that bit. Went through the rest of the interview uh, interviews, and yeah, I got to a part where um, Jeff, Jeff something, Jeff Smith, like hyper generic name, uh, multiplayer design director Jeff. Oh, this is the one that I told needs to be free to yes. play. Yes. Um, uh, Battle Royale mode. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, he gave us the scoop that I don't think anyone realized, like noticed, but they're putting in an option to use the Modern Warfare 3 style specialist system mm-hmm. uh, instead of Killstreak. So everything I was saying last week about how Killstreaks literally uh, and directly fuck the Modern Warfare experience mm-hmm. uh, can be mitigated 
by switching to uh, the Modern Warfare 3 style specialist system where you just like rank up in game as you play. Uh, I don't know if everyone remembers Modern Warfare 3, but it was a solid uh, evolution of the kill streak system. I still think score streaks are a better a better version, but um, yeah, like it builds in the right way and doesn't directly punish you for playing the objective the way the kill streaks do. Like at the end of the day, the reality is kill streaks were a fine starting point, a great starting point even, uh, but they can't be the end goal for Call of Duty because fundamentally they are bad bad game design so going back to them exclusively like uh, you know I, I think i went on about this at length last week uh going back to them exclusively is a bad idea but yeah having the option to do the specialist system that makes a bit of sense that's not a bad idea um yeah so i just wanted to point that out that modern warfare has options i guess mm. yeah it, there was also the perk that we were trying to figure out as well. Oh, uh, yeah. Where you um, didn't lose all your kills on death or whatever. But yeah, it wasn't really explained. I don't think it was working. I've rewatched my videos and I, honest to God, cannot work out how the fuck it was supposed to save my kill streaks because I got to like, uh, I think it was like 10 or 11 kill streak, uh, kills a couple of times and it would be reset on death. So I, I just think it wasn't working flat out, yeah. to be honest. <clears throat> Fair enough. Uh, and because it wasn't working, because we were more focused on playing the game when we would notice it was it had fucked up, it was always a, a little bit removed from the actual fuck up itself. Yep. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Speaking of... Uh, times I was correct about shit um, got sent a link to the uh, comments on the Doom review uh, for the Switch hmm. uh, and uh, um, yeah got sent a link to them uh, it was full of oh thank god thank god IGN got someone else to do this review uh this guy knows what he's talking about finally they've got someone who understands uh you know doom or games they didn't get that old reviewer um this guy definitely knows what he's on about the guy in question philip muchin the plagiarist <laughs> reviews editor of in of IGN on like on Switch's channel, IGN Switch channel, definitely didn't know what he was talking about. But whoever he copied it off might have known <laughs> what they were talking about. Uh, yeah, that was that was pretty funny. And the other thing where I was right and everyone else was fucking wrong, and I copped a lot of shit, but nobody's ever come back to remind me, except for Lukey, um, that uh, yeah. uh, Hitman Docker. Uh, on the no clip documentary on no clip channel, Ojo. yeah. Um, so they went back. They they did a basically a big big thing on Hitman and the future of Hitman. Um, now it's been rebooted, uh, and they started by eating a bunch of crow about how Hitman Absolution was bad and not Hitman, and yeah. I got like a lot. Like they spent a huge chunk of that huge, like a thirty five minute interview or. or video was like 15 minutes of it yeah uh i got blacklisted for saying literally what they said or, or they came to the the same conclusions they came to years later i got blacklisted and i fucked on a hate mail so that's cool that's great uh but yeah no it was a good like it's a good doco uh it's definitely worth watching i love no clip Mm. Um, I think Danny O'Dwyer is doing some really good stuff. Sometimes it feels a little bit too uh, forced, some episodes. Uh, like, mm -hmm. a little, I don't know, like, too... Hitman was, like, a really good one because he got them to talk about their their goofs. But um, the, sure. 
the one with the dudes who made the team that made um, Bastion. Right. Um, Super Giant. Yeah. That felt a little too, you know, hand jibbery. Like, mm. yeah, cool. Oh, you've never made a mistake, except, in my opinion, they absolutely have. Uh, they've goofed um, with what's that most recent transistor. Yeah, transistor. Or the one before, the one after that was the uh, uh, basketball soccer game. Uh, I talked uh, about it on here that I can't remember. Yeah, I didn't play that one. But transistor, I thought they they it didn't even come close to Bastion. Um, yeah, like, but yeah, the, their latest game looks. I haven't bought it. I think you bought it, right? I think I have. Yeah, I haven't played it's it. Epic, epic games. Yeah. It's, it, <clears throat> I keep forgetting to actually load up my. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no! Actually, I have played it. Yeah, hey, Hades, Hades, Hades. Yeah, I'm just fucking. I think I might be still drunk, eh? Hey? <laughs> yeah. Um, um. Yeah, and I think uh, the one that's sort of, you know, talk about them circle jerking each other off. Uh, the the Fallout seventy six stuff. Oh yeah. Felt a bit. Um. You know, going back and watching that. Yeah, I mean, Emotion, he had no right? like, he had no what in way of knowing that that game was going to be couldn't know crap. <laughs> and like, I think the only reason he gets the the opportunities to chat to people hmm. the way he does is because there is a sort of very subtly tacit agreement that it is like generally promotional. It's obviously promoting something. Sure. Uh, at the end of the day, it's. Uh, the sad fucking it's the nature of fucking all journalism in 2019 yeah uh but yeah that one has i aged like old milk they say uh it hasn't mm-hmm. gone well later on uh just not yeah like the no critical questions right asked. yeah it's just like a big like fluff piece of yeah you know patting everyone on the back and that's why i kind of liked the uh the hitman one is because they spend you know 60 70 of that actual documentary talking about the things that went wrong yeah. not just during absolution but what happened with square and yeah hitman 2015 2016 um yeah <clears throat> and then like how that was didn't do well for them yeah <laughs> and then being sold by square and then having to sort of become independent again and like a lot of that is not like it's just looking at all the bad things that happened to them and talking about it and, and saying that you know here's the mistakes that we made and here's what we're trying to do better yeah um like there was there was a glimpse of, of that in like the the god of war documentary that they did where they talked about all the, the issues that had but like 95 percent of the god of war documentary was talking about all the positive stuff yeah and so it's cool to see like the behind the scenes of people talking about when things don't go right yeah and that's not often <laughs> yeah and there's literally like, there's no question that things are not going right hmm. a lot of any like literally everyone who's ever worked anywhere knows that four out of five days in a week are solving some sort of crisis slash problem uh so it doesn't make sense that every time we see some sort of deep dive in a video game they're like oh it all just came together really well and everyone's fucking happy yeah because we all know it's just literally not the fucking case it's not possible essentially like at the end of the day unless the fuck it it's a it's a dev studio of fucking two people uh yeah like there's big triple a games there's too many fucking moving pieces for there not to be actual drama on a fucking minute to minute basis but Mm. yeah and we never ever ever get to fucking hear about that stuff so yeah the the hitman one went really well like from that perspective it was fucking rad yeah, I haven't had a chance to check out the other two videos. I think it was yeah, two. there's two more. It's like a we'll like how did they design that. a level and yeah, they look really stuff. interesting. I'm definitely gonna yeah. watch them. Um, yeah, I haven't watched them yet. I uh, changed my home theater uh, setup. Right. Uh, so I no longer have a computer plugged into my television. 
Uh, I did. I have had mm. that set up for fucking literally a decade and a half. I would say uh, has been how I've fucking basically operated my entire like movie catalog and TV catalog and stuff has been using a variety of uh, like a variant of XBMC or Plex or whatever. But yeah, took it all down, set up a NAS, took me fucking literally weeks to get to a point where I was even remotely happy with what it, the fuck it was doing. Uh, and like, it was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. But now it works fine. The only problem is I don't have a computer plugged in my television. So I have to use like the fucking YouTube app on my fucking mm. TV, which is the worst. Yeah. Every television app is just the worst version of any fucking app. There is no question in my mind. Fucking Stan's TV app is a fucking nightmare. I cannot understand why it exists in the way it does. The YouTube app is better than Stan, but you'd have to actively be trying to make something that was worse than Stan. Uh, it's not that much better than the Stan. Yeah. Uh, the Netflix app, I don't understand how how Netflix hasn't up, updated how they do shit in the longest time. But what I get recommended on Netflix is dramatically different to what everyone else gets recommended. And I don't mm. feel like I've pigeonholed myself as- You know why? Why is that? It's because of when your account got hacked, someone else has gone through and watched all this bullshit. And That's you're what it like, is. Yeah. you're like, what is going it's, on? It's fucked me forever. Uh, um, there needs to be like a reset to default setting like yeah, reset by my favorite movies wipe everything um otherwise you just keep getting all this like what was it lesbian lesbian <laughs> yeah <movies>. softcore <laughs> porn yeah <laughs> um yeah well fucked anyway uh yeah hey, uh, long story short had to watch it on youtube on my TV app and it's just not the fucking best user experience not compared to what was literally mouse and keyboard on my old setup uh, I had like a wireless mouse and keyboard that just sat on my fucking couch and I could just fucking search whatever the fuck search for sports documentaries slash whatever uh, on YouTube can't anymore I have to use the fucking remote and go hey scroll across the next letter I'm like 26 letters across some sort of fucking moron yeah anyway good times good times uh what games do you play this week luke because i've played one it's called pubg, PUBG. yeah <laughs> right uh yeah I've, I've played a chunk a fair chunk of pubg i'm well well obsessed with it um yeah, way back into it, but um, yeah, I don't know. I've been noticing a lot of hackers. Uh, I've been noticing a lot of hackers who use like just ESP hacks, and PUBG will tell you when someone who has been reported gets banned hmm. now, and I've not been told that people are getting banned very much, and that's disheartening to me because I actively go back and watch the fucking replays and you can see them tracking through fucking walls i had one yesterday where this dude was like literally he was trying to peek me through a fucking wall unaware that i was behind another wall at the time hiding in a corner hmm. uh so he was like he like walked walked into a village on Sandhawk with like six different houses, walked directly into the house that I was in, walked up to the room uh, where he thought I was. And you can see like on the replay, you can see where I am relative to his perspective. And then he strafes around the corner and then leans and he's aimed down sights at where I am, except I am behind a, a second wall. And mm. so then he un-aims down sights and walks into the room where I am and fucking shoots me dead. Uh, like, 
knew exactly where I was. All of his shots were headshots, but I couldn't. I didn't feel like. It, it didn't seem like he was aimbotting. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the end, there, it just seemed like he knew exactly where I was and where to, to fucking aim. To aim, yeah. Um, yeah, like it didn't necessarily like they were. It was like a bunch of consecutive headshots, uh, which is sus, but like not sus enough to definitely call out a hacker but literally ADSing around the corner and trying to peek me uh, when I was behind another fucking wall that's literally straight up fucking hacking and I've seen it I saw it like two games later I was playing a bunch of games where I was just sort of soloing solo queuing into squads but for some reason I'd say like fucking half the time when I solo queue into a squad, the squad will then leave and I will just be playing solo in squads. <laughs> yep. Uh, it's not like they can hear me talking, so it's not like I'm shit talking the whole time. I mean, I like... The problem is the games where I do get other people are awesome. Like, everyone chats, they talk through shit, they... Uh, they'll like tend to stay about a minute after they die to see what like what happens next. Uh, they're encouraging, like they. In some cases, they're fucking better than our fucking regular squad. Like, I don't know what it is about like random squad shit, but they will fucking stick to you like fucking glue. Uh, they, like, if we drop on a fucking town and there's another squad or another couple of squads there, right, if, if we do that in Discord with the regular crew, with the first person crew, fucking Jai will land over the other fucking side of the fucking city and trying to get anyone to come to the fucking house we're getting murdered in is, like, pulling teeth. But if you if you do it with fucking randos in a fucking squad in a solo queue squad, yeah, they're in the house. They're fucking. They've got you back. They're fucking on some fucking SWAT shit. They're like leaning out the fucking <laughs> around your fucking head and shit. They're just fucking banging. No, no, yeah, Jai's Jai'd be fucking off in a fucking another fucking city looting in the blue or something. But not these days. <laughs> they're fucking on it. And then yeah, if anyone goes down, they're like, oh, sorry, man, oh. I, Sorry, I didn't fucking kill him. I'll, I'll get, I'll get him back for you. Don't worry, I'll, I'll hunt him down. I don't like fucking. They will fight to the bitter, absolute bitter end. Uh, which, yeah, yeah. I don't blame. Like, I would prefer uh, at all times for my squad to bail out of a no-win situation. But yeah, in solo queue squads, every rando you're with is loyal to fucking death uh they will literally die in the blue trying to kill someone just fucking having a firefight despite the fact that if they just get in the fucking circle they'd probably get the fucking chicky d thank you fuck they're about that revenge life uh yeah anyway um yeah it's good uh, like yep. apart from the hackers it's it's good yeah. I, I definitely notice hackers more in solo queue squads. Uh, but I think that's because uh, I get into situations uh, where I can notice the direct impact players have on me. Like mm-hmm. the I'm like when I when I queue up with other people, uh, we all sort of we move as one. We all live as one and die as one and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so everything that happens to you or Drew or Heath or any of my teammates, that is happening to me. Um, so when I die, I'm not that focused on why I died unless I died last. Uh, yep. But when I die in solo queue squats, I like fucking break that shit down. Cause I got no, I got no like, there's no rush for me to get into the next game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah I'll wait for the replay or I'll, I'll rewatch the replay and see what I did wrong see where they came from try to like 
try to map out the mental fucking storyline of a game just for my own amusement because it kills time and yeah uh, so I wind up definitely seeing people who have tracked me with literally no information a lot mm. um, and yeah there, there's there's a couple of times where I'm like might have been luck I might have just been lucky but there's a couple of times where it's straight up ESP like straight up wall hacking uh, it was the only fucking explanation and it bums me up because yeah like I said I 100% know you get a notification when someone you've reported gets banned and I 100% know I have not gotten a single fucking notification that anyone I've reported has gotten banned even though I am certain like beyond it's the weekend they're on holidays beyond all shit yeah they're all at PUBG Nations Cup watching Australia fucking <clears throat> get smashed get smashed yeah <laughs> um yeah anyway you've been playing it as well uh yeah I jumped in the other night with Nate <clears throat> yep as well yep. dragged him into it he was keen to play some yep um uh, yeah it was good fun he seemed to enjoy it <laughs> back in the swing yeah took me um yeah it took me because uh, we've only just started sort of playing over the last sort of week and a half and it definitely took me a couple of days to get used to the aiming again yeah um uh, like you just gotta get used to the recoil and how that handles um but i feel like I'm, there's still I'm getting, some guns that i just can't do the fucking barrel man holy shit yeah there's literally no gun that <laughs> the dp28 has less fucking recoil than the fucking barrel i don't understand how that gun fucking exists I don't understand mm. how anyone fucking picks it up. You fucking fire... If you fire more than two bullets out of that fucking gun, you are shooting the fucking moon. Right? right? The third bullet is going to space. There's fucking no reason it exists the way it does. I had, like... I've been playing with lower mouse sensitivity. Uh, he was, like, just watching solo squads. I notice how... Shittery. Watching my own replays. I notice how fucking... Like, yeah hectic my fucking screen is yeah i post i put up a, a video like one of those videos i did uh, in call of duty and i was like fucking <laughs> fucking all over the place because i left it on default mouse sense and my tpi on that mouse that we we're playing on at the modern warfare event was like jacked up and i'm just like if i lower my mouse sense at least that won't be as noticeable uh, or if I lower my DPI. So I just press a button to lower myself down to fucking 1800 instead of 1600 DPI. And uh, I would need a table that is 18 times bigger to be able to fucking scroll enough to fucking shoot a fucking barrel on target <laughs> yeah. to manage that fucking recoil. It is out of absolutely out of control. It's fucking mm. stupid. Yeah. But yeah, it's taken me fucking ages to get used to the fucking shooting as well. I think I'm there. I think I'm back. I'm back, baby. I'm thinking I'm back. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm like above fifty percent at this stage. I'm feeling like yeah. still getting used to some of the guns that I don't use. Yeah. Um you get back to the like the for me it's the uh not knowing like I, I can shoot at someone when when we're in a hundred meter situation. But then when we get further than that, you gotta then be like all right what's my lead and like yeah. where should i be aiming like l relearning all of that stuff yeah. relearning like the sights and um the notches and what's 100 meters what's 200 meters that sort of thing and yeah, yeah it's bullet velocity <laughs> like all those little specifics of things that like that stuff has changed as well yeah in the last year and a half they've, they've changed a lot of those values you know certain guns don't use the same ammo anymore mm. so they feel completely different yeah, it's just about um, getting getting a hold of everything. But yeah. I feel like I'm getting there. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I hate Sandhawk. I can suck my sand cock. Uh, yeah. No, I hate that. I hate that gun. Uh, that map. But yeah, other than that, I'm loving it. Um, yep. Underlords. Yep. Been playing Underlords still. Yep. I, uh, I had a win yesterday with Brawnies. Oh, yeah? It's sort of like the first one where I really tried to play Brawnies properly. 
because um, I, I don't know, I don't see them a lot in the games that I play, still seeing like a lot of tr knights, people still go on knights, yeah. um, and every sort of game I'll just try and play something just different, like I'll go fucking mages or yeah. primordials or... Mages is good, eh? Whatever. Mages works, if you can make mages, like get to the point where mages is that fucking six stack. Yeah. Good lord. You are seen a lot of uh, elusive like nines. Oh yeah, they're they're trouble. Yeah, because you just can't hit anything. I think they maybe got nerfed the other day, a slight bit. Yeah, I think so as well. I saw a change to like the way they, had the text or the wording of it. They um, nerfed demon hunters as well. Oh, they nerfed yeah. terabyte in particular. Yeah, he doesn't get a double boost anymore. Yeah, yeah. Played a, yeah, I did a, a Demon Hunter build, but yeah, Brawny, man, like, once, if you can get a good start on Brawny, yeah. that causes a lot of problems for people. So would you have Beastmaster just buffed, or? Uh, Beastmaster and Juggernaut. Yeah. Um, oh, they fixed Juggernaut in that last patch, didn't they? they so, he's, it... yeah, he spins now. He spins when he... before, he'd just stand there and, like... Eat shit. Just <laughs> you like fucking spin, dude. Like yeah. do, do your damage. Because what in Dota, what happens is um, he spins to avoid damage from magic, but also he'll attack at the same time. Yeah. And I don't think he does it in this game. I think he just spins. No, he, he's definitely attacking at the same time. Right. Uh, but he only does it when he has, or he was only doing it when he had two people, two targets. Yeah. And so in like at the end. When there's just him and one other person left, he just wouldn't spin, and yeah. he'd just eat fucking magic Whatever damage is, shit yeah. forever. And you're like, you can literally negate all <laughs> magic damage, you fuck. Also, you're a warrior. How you're losing this fucking fight with a puck, you mm. turd. Uh, but puck could just fucking phase shift every time he fucking swang, swang, swung. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just fucking tea here they fixed that though so that's good he's i still don't think he's a great warrior but i think if you can buff him up enough right he must be if he can get enough health he must be close to just unkillable hmm. yeah which yeah that's cool so yeah what do you have four brownies what, what else do you have um Warlocks. no i didn't have warlocks I, I think i had warriors maybe the rest warriors okay yeah, I think I just went like full tank, everyone. Um, I think hunter. at one stage I was switching in like... A, oh, Hunters, yeah, that was it. Yeah. And then I at the very end I ended up getting Medusa. Oh, yeah. Um, and I had a... I think I had maybe a sniper in there. I was switching out sniper for Medusa. Right. At the, at the very end, but it sort of started really clicking towards that the end part where fucking Beastmaster and Jug just had like 80, 90 kills each. It wasn't a huge yeah. amount, but okay. they still had a lot. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got to play that one really weird because a lot of those heroes are early. Yeah. Like one, two, three. And it's not really like... You, you sort of don't want to go for um, XP, I guess. You kind of just want to reroll and yeah. try and get those extra units. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's like a different style of play that what well, I used to. I, I usually like don't think about that stuff, and I'm always like, yeah, fucking XP, let's go XP. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I like I enjoy playing just different builds and stuff that I haven't tried before, or just random shit and see what works and what sticks. And yeah, I was doing some um, some video stuff out of the ESL studios, and. Uh, yeah, they're all obsessed with Underlords. Uh, I don't know, they were saying that it's weird because most of them are League of Legends players. Yeah. A lot of them are League of Legends players, uh, but they still play Underlords. They prefer Underlords and they kind of, they like mentally can't understand why TFT is bigger. Uh, mm. Like they they get it because t the League is, is fucking massive, but underlords is just a better version of the game the same game um it was yeah inter an interesting chat because i hadn't even thought of like a league players perspective on underlords i, I just figured they would prefer tft but sure. no no anyway it seems like anyone who 
knows is vaguely competitive, like competitively minded, prefers Underlords. I don't know. Like I, I actually wonder if Underlords, sorry, if TFT is sort of tapping into a similar, um, similar sort of vibe as Fortnite. You know, Fortnite has propensity to fucking introduce some wildly uncompetitive shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But like what that does at the end of the day is it provides unlikely wins to not great players. Mm -hmm. There is a, like when RNG has a heavy hand in your success or failure, there is a like high propensity for bad players to get wins they otherwise didn't deserve except for dice rolls Mm -hmm. and I think there's a chance like there's a decent chance that TFT might be trying to tap into that same fucking logic right like it's absolutely what Fortnite is doing they don't care about being competitive they've got it's like based on fucking introducing goddamn invincible mech they have literally no interest in being fucking competitive. Uh, they're just keen to make everyone... It's the fucking... I don't want to sound like a goddamn boomer or whatever, but, like, it's the fucking participation award of wins, right? Like, winning in a game in those games with overpowered, illogical shit when your opponent has nothing is absolutely the fucking gold star for showing up. All right, like if you play enough, you'll win because that's sort of just how fucking statistics work. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Underlords yep. doesn't have that because it's, it's not beautifully balanced, uh, it's not like perfectly balanced, but it does, it's, it's definitely in a, in a very balanced place compared to TFT. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still think they need more heroes and they need to add them like two weeks ago because everyone just goes knights right like knights is almost the default that everyone is building towards these days at least in my levels yeah yeah uh like you were saying a lot of people are playing towards elusives now I think that's because the there was that competition is it what was it called we we play yeah, uh, there was that competition, and a lot of a lot of the pros were going elusive a lot, uh, and they did get like a, the barest of nerfs. But I, I don't think it really impacted how powerful elusive still is. And if you can get that fucking global, where they go in, invisible, for fucking oh the smoke! Oh yeah. my lord! I think um, what would be the counter to them? Like mages, mage damage. Yeah. Yeah, it would have oh, magical damage. Yeah, because I like I was physical versus <clears throat> I think I came second in that particular game, and I just like I could not hit anybody. Just like, no was taking damage because yeah. just evading every. It's like seventy five percent evasion. Yeah, like, all right, cool. so I, <laughs> like one in five hits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you need it so that when they do hit, they just fucking crumble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, I'm still digging it. It's kind of like the game I'll chuck on while I'm watching something on Twitch. Yeah. I'll sort of just mute Underlords and sit there and play a couple of rounds. Yeah. Because uh, it's easy. It's easy to sort of multitask, you know, get up and go do the fucking dishes or something like that <laughs> in between. Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, next one we got The Outer Worlds. Mm. Um, so I uh, went to an event in LA uh last month mm. i'm trying to think um uh, really big lead time on the embargo for this one which is good uh if people don't know the outer worlds is a game by obsidian um who have made a bunch of rpg games like uh some big ones people would remember uh, never never winter nights 2 um south park the stick of truth which was the first south park game yep um really really good yeah uh knights of the old republic 2 uh pillars of eternity they worked on that 
uh, that series. Uh, and then I guess the big one for them was Fallout New Vegas. Um, that's sort of considered like the one of the best Fallout games. As a as someone who grew up playing Fallout, uh, I, I didn't feel like Fallout Three necessarily stayed true to the the heart of mm-hmm. Fallout, uh, but it, I, I accepted that it was you know transitioning to a different style of game. But Fallout New Vegas was Fallout Three meets Fallout Two, in my opinion. It was Fallout Five. No, uh, it was like the true fucking true successor to Fallout Two. Uh, because yeah. it was exactly the same like s- level of humor, uh, broad RPG style, uh, like hardcore choice, like decision making stuff. Um, and yeah, like that was very, very Fallout. They really fucking got fallout compared to fallout 3 or fallout 4 which i didn't enjoy very much Mm. um new vegas is up there for me i think it goes fallout 2 new vegas and then fallout 1 i I think it's very close between new vegas and one but yeah i think new vegas is definitely the second best fucking fallout game yeah yeah uh they fucking nailed it they definitely get Fallout, which is sick. It's right. so awesome. Yeah, and I guess some of the uh, Fallout's probably their biggest, I would say, game they've maybe worked on. Like there are definitely those rest of those games are um, obviously huge, yep. critically. But in terms of sales, they haven't been massive blockbusters. Like a lot of this stuff you'll see on um, like Pillars of Eternity and Neverwinter Nights, are, are like these sort of niche style PC games that are like review extremely highly um but they're they cater towards a really hardcore rpg audience like the old school boulder gate days and things like that yeah. <clears throat> um nice old, old republic 2 is obviously a huge one as well but um yeah, yeah sort actually of, yeah like to a specific audience and yeah i think kotor 2 maybe doesn't have the same evoke the same memories because they didn't get enough time to f- quite finish it yeah but yeah but uh, generally all their stuff is for the most part pretty good Whoa, what was the other one uh it's a, it was a spy game um alpha protocol alpha protocol mm-hmm. yeah it was a sega game right yeah yeah um i think that got like had cool ideas but maybe it just wasn't executed as well uh, another I never, one i never actually they played it they never had enough time to execute on their true vision and they what sure. they put out was maybe not that, that fantastic yeah like awesome ideas but you had to look i think you had to meet you had to meet them more than halfway mm. to truly see what alpha protocol had in store yeah right and so the outer worlds is being pretty heavily marketed as like the uh you know a, a successor or, or from the team behind fallout new vegas and also the original fallout so the two directors working on the game uh tim and leonard are from um the like original fallout team yeah um, you know classic top down XCOM style fallout game black 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 isle yep yeah x black isle does who's like chris chris avalon was working with these guys at one stage as well yeah um so yeah, they're leaning pretty heavily on the whole <laughs> Fallout New Vegas team, um, which is fitting. I mean, if you watch the marketing and all the trailers behind it, it like this looks like a Bethesda game. Yeah, almost like, you, almost too much like a Bethesda <laughs> game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, to the point where it's uh, it's a science fiction setting, sort of um, in space, like a lot of space stuff. So it's being compared to like a fallout in space um or like a science fiction fallout game and i had the opportunity to play about two hours of it yep <clears throat> i can only talk about an hour of my experience um so they let us play the opening hour of the game um which included things like you know creating characters and the opening story and sort of what 
went on from there when you when you start as this character yeah uh, but they don't want us to spoil that for people. Okay. Um, I think the reason why they did that, they didn't say anything, but I think that um, <clears throat> we, was a, we were able to capture footage, which I'll chuck up on the YouTube page. Yeah. Um, and uh, when you've not played a video game before and it's your first time playing it, having you fucking potato shots and like not knowing what you're doing doesn't really make for good video capture. So I can understand why they would want people to jump in and get a feel for the game first and understanding like what's sort of going on and then your footage kind of gets better as yeah, that's really good time point. goes on. Um, yeah, because like, there's nothing worse than getting fucking YouTube comments about this person's terrible, like they don't know what they're doing. And it's like, yeah, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I've literally started playing this game 10 seconds ago. Yeah. And, and, it's, they, and they've got me halfway through the game. I'm using it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm using a mouse. I don't know. I I've evidently skipped the tutorial. And yeah, of course I'm fucking missing your shots and acting like a fucking dipshit, trying like staring at nothing for a little bit. I'm probably looking at the fucking little piece of paper they got telling you what fucking buttons <laughs> what do buttons what are, like, yeah. yeah yeah and like look going through your inventory and what guns am i yeah. what guns do i have and yeah. what's my armor and you know how does this stuff all work yeah because i haven't played this before <laughs> yeah anyway um so yeah i can't i won't talk about the start of that game uh, there was definitely some interesting things that i like probably some of the most interesting things that i saw were at that start of the game um <laughs> but it's uh like the, just the from the idea of like getting out in this world and sort of exploring it is really cool yeah um so yeah you do you do have like a character you create there's pretty basic you know rpg stats things like strength dexterity intellect um um perception it sort of there is like a a character building um like a, a skill tree that you kind of go through as you progress through the game right. every time you level up you'll get a um, a point to put into whatever stat you want to increase that and then every second um, level you get a perk that you can activate again and those perks sort of allow you to you know enhance your character in a certain direction as well um, so that stuff is is it's actually quite deep there's a lot you can really do with that and um when you build your character, do you build it from the ground up? Do you do the, like, could yeah. you make someone who's super dumb, like, for that stuff, or? Uh, <laughs> I can't talk about no, that. Okay. I feel like I can't talk about yeah, that. Okay, never mind. Uh, no, actually, I will talk about that because I talked about it in my interview. Okay. You can make somebody that is dumb, yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, when you put points into these, into these, uh, you know, attributes. Yeah. Uh, from what I gather talking to the dev you can actually go into the negative as well because there are flaws that you can get <laughs> later on in the game that will remove stats from you but give you perk bonuses right. so you can technically be a dumb dude like a dumb scientist um, because there are like a, I think they call them career aptitudes which is sort of like a you know I think scientists could have been one of those things that you kind of select. Right. Gives you, like, oh, an engineer um, gives you bonuses in, in building shit. Uh, yeah, so you could be, a, like, a dumb scientist if you wanted to. That is gold. Um, That's nice. I don't know how that would work out for you. <laughs> um, and there's, like, a, as you as you sort of put points into things like your strength and intelligence and whatnot, there's, like, different tiers and once you get to a certain threshold and that's, like, another bonus in there, it's just really deep and there's, like, a lot of uh, sort of ways that you can build out these characters and, and really sort of play to the way that you want to play um, and that really fits into sort of player choice that they're really driving for and I saw this almost immediately when I was playing um, being able to talk to characters and having like dialogue choices come up and be like alright this is your charm solution or this is like why right here um, or sort of like uh, persuade them and whatnot. So there's like these skill checks in there that you can um, sort of dice roll or that you'll get given the opportunity to select. If you meet that specific criteria, you can then trigger those um, speech sort of trees. And um, there's so much, like there's just so many choices when I was just playing this, like not knowing how this stuff would play out because um, just the variety of different ways that this conversation could go. 
just by the way that my character has been built out and what decisions that I can make when interacting with this person that seems really unique. Yeah, that's um, huge. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's a really cool way of, like you see that sort of thing in things like Fallout, but not to the detail that this is sort of seems to be going for. Like they're really trying to drive interacting with players uh, or interacting with NPCs and sort of being able to sort of choose what path you want to go down, whether you not want to lie to someone. And I can talk a bit a bit more detail into that um, with one of the missions that I did. Yeah. Um, but in terms of RPG stuff, there's things like inventory management, like a weight system and whatnot. Yeah. There are um, uh, different weapons that you can get, uh, melee weapons, things like swords with fucking do, do acid damage, um, across to pistols, shotguns, assault rifles, sniper rifles. And they, they actually, the weapons felt surprisingly really good. Yeah. Um, I do not like the shooting in Fallout. Uh, and I, I, I'm going to sit here and just, Fallout's going to be compared to this game a lot because yeah. that's just the way things are going to roll. Yeah. They're going to cop it. That's just, yeah. Um, I, I like the shooting, shooting in this game a, a lot. It felt What's really the, good. What engine are they? Is it built on? Do you know? Uh, it sort of looked like I thought it was Unreal. unreal. Yeah. I feel like it's unreal. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, it's good enough, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's no, it's no fucking reanimated Quake Three engine, but I guess it, it can work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's unreal. Uh, I can actually look that up. Yeah. Uh, I'm four. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. It. It's got that look. Um. We were we were also playing keyboard and mouse as well, which was awesome. They could let it, they let us play the keyboard and mouse or um, control if we wanted to, so that was good. Uh, and again, I felt like I picked up the shooting pretty well. Um, there's cool things with like enemies have weak points on them, uh, and the game didn't necessarily tell me this, but I would look at things on the enemy and be like, that seems like a weak point, and I'd shoot it, and eventually like the thing would explode and cause like more damage to it. Um, so they're doing sort of that sort of stuff. I guess Fallout had that, but it was more using like the VAT system. Yeah. And you would sort of be able to break away certain body parts and whatnot. Does it have anything in that vein? It doesn't have VATs necessarily, but it's got a uh, like a time slowdown system. Right. Uh, where you trigger it and time slows down. And um, also... It seems like you'll get certain abilities that'll also sort of trigger when you do that. Right. Uh, the one that I saw was sort of would pull a, pop up on the screen and give me an indication of like what this enemy that I was aiming at was and what its weaknesses were and that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, cool. I didn't like the way it was implemented though. Oh, okay. Mainly because it was on the left-hand side of the screen and I'm like I'm looking at something in the middle of my screen, yeah. trying to shoot it and then on the left is like a text box telling me like a description about what it is. Like you sort of, oh, yeah. your eyes are shifting and like, oh, okay. Um, maybe that just takes a bit of time to get used to, but yeah. every time it would pop up, I'd be like, what is that on the side? Okay, and then sort of get distracted. So yeah. maybe there's a better way that they'll, they'll get that in there. Um, you know, it could be just something simple like having it go below the whoever you're shooting, or mm. um, I don't know. Anyway, um, so that was called like a tactical time dilation, and um, there's sort of other sort of smaller abilities, things like um, uh, like a, a jump, double jump, and whatnot. But I didn't really get a, like a huge sense for how many other abilities there are in the game, or if they're really is any um right i only really have now to play but the um i talked about the floor system there's certain floors that you can get things like you can fall off of a um like a high ledge and like break your legs and that'll make you afraid of heights or something like that wow and then so you'll lose you'll lose certain um uh attributes but it'll give you a perk in something else and it's not like uh, what was it Fallout 76 had the mutations like yeah. you get sick and whatnot I think I believe in this one it'll actually pop up and say do you want these floors like oh, okay. you get the choice to actually take them uh, and if you want to take them that's sort of like the you know weighing up your options do you want to negate some of those points into your attributes and then swap them out for a perk um, so it's sort of like a advantages 
depending on which sort of tree you want to go down. Yeah. Um, that stuff seems interesting. Um, there are companions in the world. Yeah. Um, you can actually give them commands, tell them where to go, hold down certain, like, fortify, um, attack creatures for you or enemies. Um, it seems pretty, you know, robust in terms of being able to give them commands. I didn't have any issues with them doing weird shit while I was playing, so that was really cool. They have um, a lot of interaction, interaction between each other as well. So different characters that you bring on um, along with you will, you know, talk to each other and talk about different things depending on who it is that you've got with you. Um, you know, the same two characters won't talk about the same things to each other while they're there. They also interact with the NPCs that you're speaking to as well. Sometimes they'll, they'll butt in and, and say certain, um, certain things that I, I noticed that was happening quite a bunch as well. Um, <clears throat> there's systems in there like, at one stage I killed like a bunch of raiders, stole their gear, and was walking around a town, and the person I was talking to commented on what I was wearing, being like, you shouldn't be wearing that raider gear, like, there's people around here who won't like that. And I talked wow. to the developer and they're like, yeah, like that will, there will be gameplay consequences where if like people just won't like what you're wearing and shit like that, like they'll get upset and that could cause you problems later on. And I was like, fuck, all right, that's pretty cool. That's um, like cool. I didn't, that was just shit that I found on a body and was like, I'm gonna wear this cause it's got better armor. And then like a dude comments on it being like, you shouldn't be wearing that because that's not cool around here. <laughs> like people will mistake you for a raider. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That is um, sick. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, like, they're going really deep on just that sort of thing. They're sort of touching on things you can wear. There's like a disguise system as well, um, where you can pick up uh, these disguises and infiltrate areas that you're not supposed to be in. And there's like a bar that will pop up on the screen, and it ticks down as you move uh, throughout the area you're not supposed to be in, and um, sort of like a stealth section you know once once that bar runs out there'll be a an icon above people's place uh, uh, heads when they recognize you and you'll have to try and avoid them right if they do spot you and find you they'll come up and sort of interrogate you and you'll get dialogue choices and you'll need to try and sort of talk your way out of it yeah and if you successfully do that then you get a uh, your bar fills up again and right. then you get to go through and i think there's three you get three chances at that from what i saw at the moment and so you can kind of stealthy way through certain areas and and um yeah you don't actually have to engage in combat that's awesome and that's can like you, the, can you like pacifist the entire game do you know yeah. yeah yeah so that's the thing they're going through in terms of player choice is that you can play the entire game as a pacifist um the for, from what i was talking to this producer with he believed he's not 100 percent sure yeah. but he said that as far as he's aware they've just about got it down to the point where you don't have to kill anybody in the game um, or at least, you know, maybe one or two people. Right. Um, he was talking about how one of the other designers, their passive playthrough was uh, just having their companions kill everybody and, like, <laughs> them not do any of the the dirty work. Like, my hands are clean. It's these guys that are, that are killing everyone. Um, That's amazing. So, so that sort of stuff. Um, so the, the, the mission that I ended up doing... Um, was one where it was a character named uh let me find it here uh nelson mason who is like this um dodgy looking dude who is transporting drugs uh in this area called monarch um and the town there um is this sort of enormous town with a bunch of different stores and different characters that you can go and interact with and so this guy i was talking to and um He's working with these creatures called sprats. And the sprats are, from what I can gather, these sort of giant uh, rat-looking creatures. Uh, I wasn't 100% sure why they called them sprats, but I just figured it was probably space rats. Oh, yeah. It might not, might not be that, but that's what I went with. Makes sense. Um, yeah, and so the, uh, he, he's, the, the drugs um, were on these space rats, and they would go through sort of these underground tunnels... And that's how he was transporting all these um, all these drugs, but uh, the last shipment didn't arrive, and so he wants you to go 
find out what's going on and, and sort of investigate what's happening. You don't have to. You could go do something else if you want to. But <laughs> I decided that sounded like an interesting idea. And so eventually, like, I find this cave system that I have to go check in and there's a bunch of dead people in there and, um, you know, the drugs aren't there, but there's there's uh, evidence of it going somewhere else. And then so you eventually, you know, this sort of chain of events goes for like 20, 30 minutes and you get to this point where um, you find out that there is this character who's been saving these sprats um, sort of like a animal activist or animal rescue um, company and <laughs> he's been rescuing all these sprats and now the decision here is do you confront this guy and um, try and get these drugs you, you can you can kill this person if you want you can go back to Nelson and tell him that you know where the drugs are that this guy's got them and like what does he want you to do with them yeah you could tell him that like the drugs are gone take the drugs for yourself and then sell them you could just uh you know lie to him and just say you don't know where they are um and so there's all these different choices that you can kind of go down um like just through this one sort of i think it was a side quest uh there's like all these different ways that you can sort of approach it and and then sort of what you do from there it just has consequences and ramifications that really changes the narrative of the game and what you're doing um so a lot of that stuff was really cool it sort of gives you an idea of how they're approaching um the storytelling and and the different ways that you can um complete a lot of these uh missions um and the tone of it is very dark comedy like it's yeah. not serious at all it's it's super um like on the nose about stuff it's uh it's not like a borderlands style of right. humor yeah um like it's it's playing it pretty straight all that stuff yeah um like there was one part in there where i was talking to an insurance lady and she was talking about how like people were getting their eyebrows insured and things like that and it's just these you know there are moments in there that things that i can't talk about yet but mm. um where i thought yeah it's, it's got some really good writing in there yeah and i think that's where the strength of this game is really going to pay off a lot is is like the writing and um like how you as a character work your way through this game and what adventures it kind of takes you on it's that it's doing that bethesda thing of uh you know when when i find a talking dog walking down a road who takes me off on a quest and like you guys haven't seen all that sort of stuff yeah um you know those sort of situations but in terms of maybe we'll have the same quest but we'll we'll play it out in a completely different way maybe i go and uh i rescue the sprats and you know i i but i take the drugs and sell them for myself as opposed to you maybe go and like you kill the dude that's holding the sprats as the world's you... dumbest scientist <laughs> yeah and then you go back and maybe kill the dude that's asking you to do the job and yeah. i don't know like it can play out in all these different ways like you can from what he was saying you can kill basically every character in the game yeah that's and they and like they've had to design the game so that they can like you can still play it has an end, still, end state yeah yeah um the only ones that you can't kill from what i'm aware he was talking about the companions once they are a companion on your team you they die but they go in like a down state and you can revive them um but if you don't recruit them as a companion you can kill them before that <laughs> that's so, that's so yeah. unnecessary. No, but I, I feel like there's going to be some really interesting... Like, the videos that are going to go around for this game are going to be huge. Like, people diving into lore and just the way the different um, the different playthroughs and styles of plays you can go yeah. go through it are really cool. Um, but yeah, everything I saw looks looks really promising. Even though, like, uh, these games are very hard to, to judge on such a short amount of time. Like, these giant RPGs that you get two hours to play um but this one looks looks promising like it, they're doing some really interesting things um and i like sort of like the dialogue systems and at least the shooting feels good to me so i'm definitely really keen to play more of that game yeah fuck yeah i like it wasn't really on my radar at all i think mm. when people were like space fallout right i was sort of like 
uh, what bugs in space. I get it. Yeah, Starship Troopers. I I can fucking understand that. Uh, but then like, yeah, reading your piece on Survivor and yeah, hearing you talk about it now, uh, it's a like it, it definitely sounds like a fucking strong strong game in an otherwise pretty weak year. Yeah, uh, it's super weak, yeah. Yeah, and... Yeah, I, I can't fucking wait. Like, it's exactly what I have needed for mm. the longest time. A uh, good lose-yourself fucking RPG, like first-person RPG. I think it's what I've been hanging out for from Cyberpunk. But... Yeah, I, I don't know. This sounds like so much more. Like everything you were saying, it sounds like they went to a limit. Like what we would consider the limit, and they've just gone further with it. You know, like they're just pushing it even further. You can kill everyone. You can pacifist everything. You yeah. like sneak your way through areas, talk your way out of being down and stuff like that that sort of stuff hmm. it's yeah it doesn't need to fucking exist it doesn't need to be there but it's so awesome that it is and that's yeah. that's how we wind up with like revolutionary games that's how we wind up with people like it sets a new fucking standard it sets a new bar which yeah. is awesome um, one of the other things that I, I noticed when I was playing was uh, before I actually went in and started doing any missions, I kind of just roamed around the area and just wandered off um, and cleared out like a decent chunk of this specific location. Because um, what it sounds like is you'll go to different planets and whatnot um, as you progress through the game. And, and uh, I cleared this area, went back to the town, which there was a loading screen. Um, <clears throat> did this uh talk to this nelson dude about the space rats sprats and eventually left that area and this is all in the video footage people will be able to see this um yeah. on youtube but I, I i came back out there and was walking back down where i was before and none of the creatures i i thought maybe they would respawn or something like that right um <clears throat> i talked to a developer about that and he said that they're generally they won't respawn like once you've cleared them they'll clear them but on occasions things will start to come back and not necessarily the same things you've killed like other creatures could like if you take out an area maybe they'll migrate to a like a different area and that'll cause like new opportunities for you to sort of attack things um other times they just won't re like nothing will respawn right but if you've wiped out an area it could cause something else to come in and it sounds like he said that they'll that'll have consequences sometimes as well so like i don't know what that means but it just um yeah i don't like when i play games and i clear out an area i fucking hate it when i come back and i'm like oh man all this shit's respawns <laughs> like yeah i just spent so long doing all this and i come back and now i've got to do it all again so i enjoyed that like it sort of stayed persistent and that's so big it's so didn't, good didn't come back but i uh, yeah like it's when I played Fallout 76, I th said in my preview that I think people that like Fallout, like, r hardcore fans will like that game. Yeah. Like, I didn't really get a lot out of it when I yeah. played it, but... Um, but this game, I, I feel like there's, you know, because I feel like the shooting's really good, yeah. I like all the dialogue system and sort of the player choices that you can go with, um, and uh, just the stuff that I saw at the start that I can't talk about. Yeah. But yeah it seems like um it's going to be a, a promising game like if it's as filling as rich as what i've seen so far like if the rest of that game is like that that that's going to be um i think it could be a lot of fun uh yeah and it's kind of as you said going to fill this void of there not being a lot especially in terms of rpgs there's nothing really at the end of the year that's coming out like a, a narrative driven rpg like this yeah i mean there's a lot of action games that have rpg elements in them these days but yeah um, yeah, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Obsidian because I feel like they're the uh, they're at the top of yeah. sort of the RPG. And I mean, there's a reason why they got picked up by Xbox true. this year to make um, to make games for them because they're a very good studio. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is the first playthrough we played, uh, which is funny. Uh, 
had to create you, you know you, you make a character and I called my character Dutch mm. um because of Predator of course <laughs> I was thinking of a name and we finished that playthrough and they're like alright there's a load you need to load up uh go to the load, get, load screen and there's a character there called Dutch if you load that up um that'll take you to the next section of the game and I'm like wait what <laughs> <laughs> and I, I grabbed the dude and I'm like my character's name's Dutch uh, that's what I called him and then like he was telling everybody at this event this was going on um <laughs> and then they they had a like an exit meeting and whatever later on where they talk about things that went right and then wrong and whatnot you generally see that sort of thing oh. um and he went around and asked all everyone that was there if I like if you were naming character Dutch was it would it be after Red Dead Redemption or Predator <laughs> 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 and the, the, he came. He told me later on that because when I, I went out for dinner with him, yeah. later on he was like, "Yeah, everyone said Predator." Because <laughs> <clears throat> the guy that actually made the sofa wasn't. I think it was a, a designer that wasn't there. But yeah. <clears throat> anyway, Let's go. funny little story. Uh, cool. But yeah, I dig it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to this game. It sort of wasn't that original trailer really got me excited. Yeah. Um, and then it sort of fell off my radar from then yeah. on but I'm That's definitely keen to check out more like what I've seen from it so far it looks really promising um, how far away is it? it's like next month October isn't it? we're in August champ oh okay <laughs> right um, it's the only yeah October 25th so Got it. it's two and a half months yeah um, yeah, I'm hoping it's as good as what I've seen because uh, I'm digging digging it so far. Looks like a lot of fun. It's yeah. it's uh, it's pretty, but it's also there's bits where you're like, oh, that's ugly. Like, <laughs> like you look at a ground texture and a rock, and you're like, what the that fucking oh yeah, that's that's not good. There's too much <laughs> too much character in everyone's faces. Yeah, like they're going hardcore on the uh, the wrinkles type thing. Mm. Just weirds me. Everyone looks like they've lived a hard life. <laughs> got some fucking, got some city miles on them. Um, yep. Yeah. No, it looks. Yeah, it sounds fucking sick. I can't wait. Two and a half months. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll definitely put up that footage along with this uh, episode, um, and I'll cut out the bits where I think I went for an interview at some stage. Oh yeah. And then came back. Um, so yeah. Definitely came. All right. Sweet. Should we do some news? Let's do it. Uh, DayZ has been refused classification in Australia. Yes. This is the DayZ game that we talked about eight years ago. Eight years ago. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just fucking... Fucking... It is not out yet. <laughs> good God. It's No, it's hit 1.0. What, what did... What did... Fjorn... Fjorn said I, I was like... He said something about, like, I can't believe that game hasn't been finished yet. I'm like, you did 1.0. What are you talking about? And he's like, I know what I fucking said. Uh, yeah. Basically, yeah, it's not finished. It'll never be finished. Uh, they're currently adding Survivor games. Actually, if we're talking about games I've played, loaded up Survivor games with a Z on the end, which is a DLC for DayZ. I uh, still can't get into a single match of that game, so that's going well. Um... But yeah, no, Daisy. They've they've had uh, marijuana or uh, c- cannabis. I think it's called mm. in game cannabis. Yep. Uh, in in game, uh, but not usable for two years. Uh, so not only is it an eight year old game, this has been in the game for two years, not activated, but to the like it's 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 not available now either it's not like suddenly it's available in the OFLC or whatever the fuck they call now uh, classification board were like well now that it's got marijuana you can't have that in a game uh, no it wasn't like that it's still not available uh, and so yeah it got yeeted uh, there's so much to this. There's so much to this story that just fucking kicks ass. It's beautiful. I love it so much. Uh, fucking yeah, Daisy being an unfinished game where they're adding a fucking plant that can't possibly do anything for anyone 
in a gameplay sense. What the fuck is it going to do? What are you going to do? Like, force feed someone some fucking weed? Like, what would that do? Like, give them a slight buzz? They're not allowed to shoot anymore. Ah, that's what it is. They're too fucking chilled out, baby. Uh, Stone has never killed anyone. Um, yeah, like, what the fuck? What the f- absolute fuck is that? And then, yeah, the fact that it's not available in the game, the fact that they've added stuff but not implemented it, it is pretty classic DayZ. Uh, the fact that they've implemented something they've got no use for is pretty classic DayZ. The fact that somehow it is back in the fucking news, uh, despite yeah. essentially being fucking dead for the better part of like three years. It's classic DayZ. Uh, yeah, there's just so much. It's it's beautiful. People have really fond memories of DayZ. I have fond memories of DayZ. Of a mod for a game mm. uh, that I played. I do not have fond memories of uh, what the game has become. Um, yeah, it's just so dumb. It's so yeah. dumb. The fact that they've banned it or refused classification uh, when everyone who's ever bought it has definitely already bought it. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. But this is for the physical re- release, right? No, it, they're removing it from the digital stores as well. Yeah. Right? Because like, what's happened is Five Star, who's a, a, a PR like slash publisher down, yeah. distribution company down here, um, uh, submitted it for the classification ball for the physical version. It was refused, given an RC classification. Then Bohemia resubmitted one through the... Uh, through like a electronic form right um so i don't know if they went over the top of five star mm. like fuck it we'll do it ourselves or if they were just like we'll just do it ourselves uh and then that got automatically given ma 15 plus but then the classification board saw that yeah. slapped an rc on it yeah and now it's being removed from digital stores as well yeah that's bananas also because they can't resubmit it now can they it's once the second strike hits in no, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't think they can resubmit it. No, they, they, they. I think they can appeal, but they can't. Like that's a different process. I think they fucked up by going straight to the automatic form. Bit. Yeah, yeah. They should have waited five star to do it properly. Uh, yeah, yep. Um, it's also messed up because weed is so inconsequential. Mm. Like it doesn't fucking matter. It's not it fucking. Doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not fucking heroin. It's not like nobody, nobody's life is uh, getting fucking ruined. Like, it is so fucking 1950s fucking logic to be all like, oh, yeah, oh, no, reefer madness. Oh, the, the marijuana is going to ruin. It's a gateway drug. Uh, yeah, it's so fucking old school for no fucking reason at all. Uh, it doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. They're, not, they're not growing poppies and then fucking turning them into opium or some shit. They're not all fucking... There's not opium dens in Daisy or some shit. There's some fucking cannabis for, as far as I can tell, no fucking reason at all. Maybe you can make some pants out of it. But yeah, the Australian government's like, well, it's classif- It's a classified drug. A classification one drug. Stupid. Stupid shit. Uh, yeah. It's good. But also... Generally, it's like a, uh, uh, like if it gives you gameplay the benefits or yeah, so, like that's a no no. But that's Drug not use as related to like rewards, right? Yeah, but it's not in there. So it's, I think there was yeah. maybe just someone need to explain that like it's not there and working. <laughs> it's not in the game. It doesn't work. Even if it did, it wouldn't provide you with any fucking buff. I don't see how it could. Hmm. Uh, yeah. This is a game where you can literally force feed another human being uh, to eat motor oil. Uh, but yeah, ban it for drugs. Ban it for the most harmless drug there is. Good move. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You can b- bind someone's hands, put a sack over their head, and then execute them while they're on their knees. But yeah, no, but not, but not have any fucking weed in the game. Um, yeah, that's stupid. Anyway, what else we got? The WNBA has been included in NBA 
2K20. Uh, that's sick. I like it. Good move. Good move, NBA. Uh, I'm well about it. Yeah. So this is all uh, all the official tw- teams, all tw- uh, 12, sorry, yep. um, have been added into the game. Uh, the video that I watched said they added like thousands of animations in there, new animations for the all the women's players, yep. um, which is cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, just allows more people to... Are you a Sparks fan, Luke? Oh, am I? No. Um, huh? I don't think... Uh, um, like I don't even know how to watch the games. Like if it was on League Pass, then yeah, it's weird that it's not. I'd watch the finals, but yeah, I don't think it is. I mean, in a day and age where the Team USA basketball has signed a deal with Twitch, and the <laughs> yeah. games are being streamed on Twitch, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know the. What, whatever dregs are left of Team USA basketball, you mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Campbell Walker and... <laughs> Kyle Kuzma. S- yeah, <laughs> and 16 <laughs> rookies. Uh- <laughs> I saw a post today about people that were getting cut from that team. I'm like, oh, man, that's like... <laughs> How are you going to get cut from that <laughs> team? Good God. Lord. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. That's right. That's cool. Good move. Yeah. Uh, All right. Oh, yeah, this one here. Um, Australia beat New Zealand in the Bleslow Cup game one. Uh, suck it, New Zealand. Yeah, cool. All right. Next up, we've got Borderlands 3 on PS4 Pro. We'll have performance 60 foot. What? You read this. This is yours. Oh, so um, the PlayStation 4 Pro version of Borderlands 3 will have a two modes in it. Performance mode, which is 60 frames per second, and a resolution mode, which is 4K uh-huh. HDR. Uh-huh. Um, but on top of that, there will be configurable settings where you can toggle some of this stuff on and off. So you could have, in theory, 1080p with HDR or like, um, I believe they were talking about things like super sampling and be able to switch, switch that stuff on and off. Um, sort of like the things that we kind of wanted from these different SKUs. Mm. <laughs> SKUs, how are you going to use that? How dare you use that word <laughs> on this podcast? Yeah. Um, uh, so, like, different units of uh, SKUs, yes. <laughs> mm. um, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, on PC, you can do all of that. So, yep. nice. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. more, and more actually. Um, you can go... You can make fucking claptrap into a fucking ladyboy if you want. <laughs> you do anything you like. Uh, but, no, that's cool, PS4, bro. No, well done. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, like, yeah, if I was going to play on PS4, uh, like, if I was going to play on console, I'd probably go for PS4 because of that. I've got a PS4 Pro, so I don't see why I, I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't play, I don't think 60 frames per second matters that much in Borderlands. Um, well, I don't think my TV can do 60 frames per second. <laughs> So, uh, oh, no, I think it can. Uh, that's probably the limit. Um, but, yeah, I don't I don't think it would matter that much, but oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, this is on the um, official PlayStation blog. blog. They talked about yeah, right. a lot of these details. Yep. So there's no word on what Xbox is going to do, but right. uh, I'm sure there'll be something. I'm sure the Xbox One X can, can measure up. Uh, yeah, cool. Nice. That's uh, news. No, one more thing. Uh, Eve Echoes. Uh, CCP Games uh, is is using Australia and New Zealand as the test bed for their new mobile MMO, Eve Echoes. Uh, so Australia will be available as the uh, like to to opt in. Mm. Hold up. Yep. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's sort of Eve light, uh, like a bit of an easier entry point than than regular Eve, which is cool. Uh, I'm about it. Like Eve, I've played Eve before. I played it fucking ages ago. I, I, there's not enough going on for me to really get into it, but it does actually sort of like mentally, it makes sense. Uh, on the mobile platform as something that you log in and, and sort of 
feel about with for a, a couple of minutes and then log off, mm -hmm. duck away. Uh, I think that's a really good like way that that would really work for it. Um, but yeah, you can. I believe you can sign up for the alpha at evecos dot com. Uh, I'm definitely interested uh, to check it out. Um, you have to have an iOS, uh, an iPhone six S or above, or a Samsung Note eight or S eight or above phone. Uh, it says Pixel two. I've got a three. So I assume I can use that. It doesn't say above Pixel 2. Yeah. I don't understand. I don't, know. I don't necessarily understand that. But no, I'm definitely going to check it out. Um, it is, uh, yes, yeah, Sandbox MMO. Uh, Eve was never, yeah, super involved. It was never fucking something he had to play super, like, paying attention. But sure. Yeah, it should be good. Um, yeah. Right. Um, the only other one, one was on here was uh, I don't know if you'll talk about the Walmart removing uh -huh. video game advertising from their stores they're still selling guns yep. we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas uh, <laughs> this is the fucking dumbest shit of all time it is some of the, the sad like the whole situation it's like America got raided I don't know if you noticed you saw this just before you fucking moved over there but Amnesty International has issued a travel advisory warning for people going to the United States for the first mm -hmm. time in history. It is now uh, rated as a dangerous place to visit, mm -hmm. uh, which is fucked. That is fucked. Um, it sits alongside, like, Somalia and... Uh, Egypt and shit as places that have travel advisories telling you to be careful because shit's going down now. Um, yeah, Walmart did this. It, it's not permanent. They said it wasn't permanent and that they were doing it sort of out of respect for the victims uh, of the El Paso shooting, um, which was, what, early last week? Uh very early last week, uh -huh. uh, and obviously occurred at a Walmart. Um, it's still fucked. I mean, it even from a PR perspective, it it doesn't look good. It makes it look like it is just a, a stunt designed to placate the absolute fucking spanners who are crying out for any reason any reason why these things keep happening in America that doesn't involve the massive massive availability of high powered weapons uh, and the absolute woeful state of their mental health system uh, or health system in general really um like any any excuse that doesn't involve actually tackling the problem at hand, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, so Walmart caving and doing this is just such a fucking dipshit move. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's so cooked. I, I feel so bad uh, for for people who like over there who must live in fear right like i'm sure we go you know we travel there a bit hmm. and i was talking this talking about this with nate last night i've never felt unsafe mm -hmm. but there are some factors there that you know it's because i'm six foot tall and white and heavy set and yeah like of course i I'd never feel safe like Sure. Uh, I never feel unsafe. Uh, but there are people who don't share the same qualities as me mm -hmm. uh, who would feel unsafe. And they have, a, sadly, I have reason to feel unsafe. That's fucked. Like, America's spent so long as the fucking the king of the world. 
And now, yeah, for a large, large, huge population of the world, the overwhelming majority of the world, uh, they would have reason to feel unsafe while traveling to America. It's yeah. fucked. I mean, we're at the, the point now where, and this has only happened the last recently, where <clears throat> like we'll go to media events and have bag searches and like walk through metal detectors and there's security everywhere. Oh, well, like this is for a fucking yeah. media event. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> or, or even like, I'm glad it's at places like E3 now. Yeah. But it used to be an in- industry an event where there was none of that stuff. Yeah. Four or five years ago, you just walk in. Yep. And um, now it's at the point where the public are allowed in. Mm. Um, yeah, and they've got lines up out the door for security and bag checks. Or you, you can't bring bags into that event unless you're part of industry. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I'm, I'm happy with. I'm glad that, that yeah. those checks are there. Yep. Um, but when that stuff starts happening here as well, like I've been to events here locally now where they're doing that sort of stuff. And that's yep. unheard of. <laughs> yeah. But because of the sort of things that have happened overseas that these companies start getting uh, like global directives on things yeah. they need to do in terms of security. And so that trickles down to our areas where that stuff does not happen. Yeah, we got uh, we had the same thing happen at the Anthem event in Japan hmm. where it never happens. Yeah. Uh, and... It was. It's definitely because we're doing it in the states. We have to do it everywhere, mm-hmm. which is just fucking wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's, anyway, it's fucked. Anyway, it's cooked. Yep, it's well cooked. All right. All right. What questions. 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 Uh, the GA Podcast dot com slash Discord. Here we go. Z Doctor writes. With the latest Call of Duty looking rather promising, first, that has piqued my interest in a long time. How long after release date can we predict the, that Crap Division will inject their microtransactions and premium currency BS into it? They did it recently with Crash Team Racing. Oh, even though they said they wouldn't be in the game, which I guess is PR BS for saying at launch, and with Black Ops 4. One could argue saying that they are just cause sorry, that they are just cosmetic, but a lot of games seem to be offering boosters for real-world money as some some form of shortcut, which definitely isn't just cosmetic, and more often times than not, it seems to directly affect the design and the gameplay to increase the grind unnecessarily to make those boosters seem more appealing. As game journos... As game... Sorry. As games journos, how do you feel... How do you guys feel about publishers and game devs not adding in these BS predatory mobile game con job systems at launch so as to either avoid those systems being criticized in reviews or to avoid having those labels being slapped on the cover of the coffees warning people that there are in-game purchases attached to these games? First question, I guess. Uh, multiple questions. Great. Multiple, multi-question Peace, Z Doctor. Uh, first one was, how long after release date can we predict that Crap Division will inve- inject their microtransactions and premium currency BS into it? I think by March next year, but uh, that's my guess for when this this fabled battle royale will come in. I think they will use the battle royale launch as a distraction to inject. Uh, the same shit that they put into Black Ops 4, which is the uh, crate-only weapon bullshit that they've been doing. I don't know if you saw this, but um, there are weapons in Black Ops 4 now that you can only get from crates uh, that right. are not wildly overpowered. Uh, I think they might not even be overpowered anymore, but they definitely released overpowered we've talked about this a bunch of times how Mm -hmm. devs often release a game uh an update or inject put something into the game that's overpowered and then nerf it back Mm -hmm. um mostly because people will then play it a lot um because it's overpowered uh and that what what they need is a shit ton of data so they can know how to nerf it correctly um that doesn't excuse this uh but yeah in black ops 4 
you can only use those guns if you have found them in a crate uh, or if you attain them from a crate in game uh, which is heinous absolutely heinous that's not fucking yeah that's changed a lot from the time that we were playing where it was the, the book like the two tier book premium yeah. And, yeah. and normal I like that system yeah uh, that's not just cosmetic by any means that is literal gameplay shit. Game, yeah yeah uh which is fucked and yeah they, that's pretty recent i didn't know about that they did in crash team racing everything i heard about crash team racing made it seem like it was a pretty fucking rad game um except for what was it loading times that you were loading times were like yeah. 40 seconds yeah when I was playing. Um, but yeah adding mic transactions is horseshit to that game uh i guess cosmetic stuff and that's it right at the end of the day for me if it is actually just cosmetic i don't give a fuck right like add it in but like c doctor said if they start adding in time saving boosters it definitely has a direct impact on gameplay because they balance the game to incentivize people to buy the boosters uh sure. which i fucking hate uh yeah. second question we, we, oh, oh you go. no you go. no i was gonna say that we um we, when we were over there for modern warfare they weren't uh, talking about cosmetics like no. we tried to ask them about it they weren't yeah. talking about it i didn't see anything in the game that we played that hinted at any of that stuff yeah uh so I, don't, I don't know there are multiple like characters you can have in games so i guess they could sell that kind of stuff um, but they weren't gameplay benefit characters. absolutely not just they they talked they about, talked about how like they were all even to the extent that even their executions take the same amount of time they're different animations yeah. but they all take the exact same amount of time so that there's no benefit in using one over another like so that's the um the the apex legends thing and that's why I couldn't figure out what they were talking about when they said executions, because there is nothing in that game where you would want to execute somebody. Um, I, I think, or is it like meleeing? Yeah, if you hold melee instead of tapping it, you yeah. go into an execution animation. Right, I, they, they didn't tell us any of that. They did not, until the interview, uh, <laughs> after we yeah. had the opportunity to ever really use it. Um, but yeah, uh, I don't think I'd, I I mean I, I could have done it to flex on my Elliot on music a bit more but <laughs> yeah. uh, otherwise I probably wouldn't use it um, second question as games journalists how do you feel about publishers and game devs not adding in these BS predatory mobile game con job systems at launch so as to either avoid those systems being criticised in reviews or to avoid having those labels being slapped on the cover of the copies warning people that there are in game purchases attached to these games uh, I am absolutely not a fan uh generally fucking livid uh it is so fucked that for the longest time metacritic uh held the first review as sacred like sacrosanct sanct the yeah. first number they still do don't they submitted yeah uh, but- uh they, they've they've actually got a different system now whereas if it's a, a review in progress they yep. will separate that yeah and then update it but we'll i don't think they update, update reviews yeah no yeah they still hold that uh but yeah they did that to protect the game journalists hmm. uh it was but now it's been for the other way around against <laughs> critics yeah which is just fucked that is so gross um the flip side is uh that often it happens to games that I don't give a fuck about it anymore, um, which obviously isn't the best attitude in the world. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, once a game has reached that point, uh, yeah, once it's reached the point where I just don't care anymore, then it doesn't really impact me. I don't have enough time to keep an eye out on all this shit, right? Like, there's so much happening on a day-to-day basis that going back to black ops for 10 months after release eight months 10 months after release to find out what garbage predatory bullshit they've injected sure uh doesn't seem like a, an efficient use of my time um yeah like i said not the best attitude but yeah it is what it is uh yeah uh not not happy i'm not i'm just generally not happy that 
they do this. Uh, I wouldn't like put it at the feet of game devs. This is publisher shit at the end of the day, or this is this is suit shit, right? Like, I, I don't think it's fair to lay it at the feet of game developers who are trying to make the best game they can, who then get told from up on high that they need to extend the XP gain system so that they, so that people will want to buy the boosters or whatever. They're just doing their fucking... That's... Yeah. And when I say it out loud, they're just doing their job. That's some... Uh, that's some fucking... Was it Nuremberg trial shit? But still, uh, there is a limit to the amount of power they have and they are grossly underpaid, so I don't think they deserve to, to be fucking held accountable uh but yeah the suits the powers that be who push that shit they're fucking gross and they definitely deserve to be held accountable any thoughts yeah for, for me the only one that i um know of that i've done recently was would have been nba 2k 19 <clears throat> they uh that was bad yeah yeah and i i I reviewed that yeah. for Survivor, um, and I knocked the points down for that game. Yeah, like that game, that that series is like a nine. Yeah, every year. Yeah, <laughs> but th- that year, I think um, I'm one of the lowest on Metacritic at the moment. Yep, it was like a seven. I knocked it like two points for microtransactions, basically. Which is <coughs> why they hold that shit back. And then unleash it well, later no, on. They're, is... they're going even harder with that. It's like the buy the ultimate editions and get yeah. the currency and all this shit. And like I was reviewing that game, and I had people that were higher level than me because they must they have got the game so much fucking money. Yeah, and then they do the tiered things of like you get to play it early and yeah. all that stuff. And like I go into the the park and I just get fucking swatted at because like every shot that I put up just gets rejected because they're all fifteen points higher than me. And the game's not even out yet, technically. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway. Mm. <clears throat> that's it. Like, I don't review a lot of stuff, generally, yeah. but that's the last one that... Or the one that does it the most, it's fucking terrible. And they, they're not going to remove it. It's, it's 2K's biggest game, so... It makes them the most money. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I don't like it. But um, I don't mind the cosmetic stuff. Like, it just means that, in the long run, you can help support the games longer yeah if there's stuff in there that I play a lot I'll, I'll buy it like the Apex stuff yeah recently free to play game that I've spent a couple hundred hours in I don't mind chucking the money yeah alright was well, that it uh, is it cool cool um, The Gap you can find us on iTunes Android Windows Store Spotify YouTube all those places The Gap the GA Podcast uh, if you've got a bit of time please rate and review the show helps other people find it yeah um you can also find us on social media, which is twitter.com slash GA podcast, facebook.com slash GA podcast. You can go to our YouTube page, uh, the GA podcast.com slash YouTube. We've got modern warfare footage up at the moment. Um, nice. I think most of it went up. I, I edited it to adhere to the embargo mm. or our NDA, mm. where it's allowed to show certain clips of whatnot, certain sections. Um, yep. I think I got most of the Elliot stuff in there. There's like one round. One of the maps we didn't get in because we smashed him for way too long <laughs> and it was longer than <laughs> the allocated time right um but yeah you can go check that out uh, i've got about an hour of the outer worlds that you can check out on there on this episode yep i will definitely watch um i don't normally watch down because i don't give a fuck i don't give like, a fuck what we're saying Nobody, yeah, oh really nobody nobody wants to hear what we're saying but I'll watch oh no I take the sound off because I don't want to hear <laughs> whatever's happening in the background <laughs> that makes sense yeah. yeah maybe I should turn the sound up a little bit <clears throat> but then you come in a problem where it's a game like that and you've got people characters you're talking to that we yapping and then in it's, the background of us yeah, talking yeah it's, it's not fun it's anyway confusing. Mm-hmm. You, you can check that out um, jpodcast.com slash youtube yep. you can also go to our website the gapodcast.com it's got links to all the things we talked about uh, all the links we just talked about including past episodes of the show if you want to go check them out mm. that's all thanks to our Patreon members if you want to help support the show you can go to patreon.com slash gapodcast thank you to everyone that does it every month you're much, the best muchly appreciated 
And I think that is it. Have you got anything you want to shout out to this week? No. No. Shout no. out to the boys in PUBG. Shout out to PUBG the PUBG Nations. Lift your uh, game. Lift your game, lads. No, they get they get paid regardless. They're doing the uh, Overwatch World Cup style where just being there, you get a pay packet, which is cool, which is mm. good. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I want... Chinese Taipei or Vietnam to win the Nations Cup. That's my fucking dream. One yep. of those two. Taiwan number one. Um, <laughs> that's it. Now our podcast is banned in China. My bad. Uh, next week. This week. This week. This week. This week. This week. Borderlands yep. three. Later yes. this week. We'll Later this week. Borderlands three, and we will record it on a fucking reasonable day. I uh, got sort of pushed out. I was stuck in some stuff for some extremely long fucking days on Thursday and Friday that I did not see coming. But yeah. 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 Next week, we've played a, a bunch of Borderlands 3. Mm. So we'll be able to talk about that. We've got <clears throat> gameplay footage, which I need to look at. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but uh, that'll be next week. The week after, we've got another one coming up. Mm. Oh, you're allowed so, to say what it is? Uh, yeah, fuck it. Ghost Recon on Breakpoint. Sick. So that'll be the week after. Yep. Um, we got stuff. Big, stuff is coming through. We got stuff, baby. It's big. A lot of things happening. Then after and, that, you um, fucking leave. Yeah, and then well, Rainbow Six is is uh, soon as well. We've got the, the Major happening next week. Rayleigh, yeah. Yeah, so that should be fun to watch. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm leaving. I, I don't. Have we talked about this? No, I don't think, I think so. we have. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Not Luke's, on here anyway. Luke's leaving Australia. He's too good. He's too. <laughs> he's too big for this small fucking town. Yep. It's going on the big city, San Francisco. Inside of a month. Inside of yeah. a month. That's crazy. No, less than three weeks. You didn't even let me steal all your shit that you can't possibly take over, which is. Pretty fucking weak source, man. Like what? TV. Do you want a blender? WRX. TV, TV uh, I'm selling. I've got to put it up somewhere. WRX? It's gone. Should have sold it to me for $1,000 and then gotten the fucking... Gotten the... Covered the rest. You With know? what? <laughs> Who's covering the rest? That's insurance. Magic. Magic man. Magic man. Yeah. Uh, it's easy. You know, just fucking work it out I don't know it's not my problem mm. uh, yeah I don't know There's, it's crazy yeah yeah. so I got my visa last week so officially no this this week technically I got it this week right um, yeah officially last, I'm out. last week this week just started we're still recording okay 15 hours ago um, <laughs> yeah yeah you're outie. Uh so that's a two year visa <clears throat> yep yep uh, looking to stay longer, I suppose. If anybody asks, it's two years. Ah, uh, yeah. Wink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So uh, I guess the the main thing is that this will still keep happening. We obviously do this on the internet anyway. Yep. Um. I don't think anything will change, except for when we record, which we record about lunchtime anyway. So yeah, it just means it'll be later in the day for me. Yep. Uh, and hopefully the latency won't be... Oh, uh, sick lag. We'll have such a sick lag. We won't be able to play games in, together anymore. Well, that'll be a problem. No, you can just get a VPN. Oh, yeah. Go on. And uh, 110 ping. It's going to so, be... You. You're going to... You're like... What are you going to... How are you going to play games with fucking... I think... Winners in North America. They can't play PUBG. I don't know if you've been terrible. watching the fucking Nations Cup, but you're gonna. It's gonna be chipped oh, in the city. Well, that's actually why I'm going over. Ah, uh, it's all coming together now to play PUBG. Yeah, <laughs> I'm back. <clears throat> I think games like Borderlands will be fine, right? That's not like yeah. Um, that sort of stuff is okay. Co-op games and whatnot, but yeah, competitive games will be fine. I'll still be able to carry you guys. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this guy. Um, more fun. to come throws all these grenades at fucking tanks as they drive past. <laughs> yeah. I just like to get, make the game too challenging. Of course. A bit harder. Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's the podcast. Uh, that is the podcast. See you later this week. Bye. Bye. Bye.